So we've known for a while now that the Waste Management Phoenix Open is known to be a party, but what we saw on 16, well, that, that speaks for itself, right? Like, I don't really need to go into it. Get Harry Higgs, Joel Damon, take their shirts off, waving them around, and then come the beer cans. It got so insane. So many beer cans were on the course. I mean, look, you got to dodge for them there. Uh, they had a pause minute, or pause play, I should say, for several minutes there. Uh, so what do we think about all this going on at the Waste Management? For more on that, let's welcome the host, of course, record Michael Breed. So like I said, look, we know that it has been a party there. This year, I, I told you coming into this, I was watching a news story, and, and people are doing their bachelorette parties there, not just bachelor parties. They don't know what's going on with the actual tournament. Beer cans are being thrown. What do you think about the party at Phoenix? <laughs> well, listen, just go back a couple of years ago. We had a streaker on one of the holes for five minutes. We had a five minute streaker. And then we had streakers on hole number 16 with Joel Damon and Harry Higgs. I mean, maybe it wasn't full streaking, but they were they were taking clothes off. What I look, I, I think it's an interesting thing, right? Because for me, I'm a golfer and I understand everybody wants to go and they want to have a good time. And I'm all about that. But when you start throwing beer cans onto a, a green and you're damaging a green. Look, I'll say it this way. Patrick Cantlay on Sunday had a putt of 37 feet on that 16th hole, and he was leading or tied the lead or around the lead the whole day. And his ball bounced two inches up in the air and came up four feet short. Now, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen to a Patrick Cantlay. It doesn't happen to a PGA Tour player unless something like that occurs. And so what do we think about this? What do I think about it? I think it was really sort of a spectacle the first time when Sam Ryder made this hole-in-one. And then after Ortiz makes a hole-in-one, all of a sudden you go, well, wait a second. And then after a chip-in by JT and uh, that situation with Harry Higgs, I think it's over the top. Right now, I think it's over the top, and I think that it's, it's something that has to be quelled. And I don't know how... Uh, the WM is gonna gonna do it, or the PGA Tour is gonna do it, but it has to stop because it's not. First of all, it's not welcome in our sport, and second of all, it's not welcome in any sport. You throw a beer can onto the field at Yankee Stadium, and you will be ushered out and likely end up going to jail. So I, I, I you know, look, I don't want to play Debbie Downer, but I just don't think that that has a place in in any sport, let alone the game of golf. I, I think you brought up a good point there. Try to bring it in a little bit. Not sure how they're going to do it, but that's up to them. Uh, we'll see next year, and we'll see what happens because, of course, the Super Bowl goes down in Arizona the same weekend as the Waste Management. But again, that's for 365 days from now. Let's talk, talk about ex actually <laughs> what happened uh, on the course. Scotty Scheffler winning after 71 starts on tour. He breaks into the top 10 and the world's golf rankings for the very first time. How does he use this momentum to turn it into more success? Success. Well, let's not forget, too, that the momentum of the Ryder Cup was a really big deal for Scotty Scheffler. He was 2-0-1. He beat John Rahm 4-3 and in that Ryder Cup, made four birdies in the first four holes, got that four-up lead, and then, I don't want to say he coasted, but he certainly uh, got the win. I think the Ryder Cup was something that gave him some momentum. I think now the momentum is he took down uh, Patrick Cantlay in a three-hole playoff. I, I think you, you now have confidence in your ability to win on the PGA Tour. And we all knew that he would win. Um, some of us thought that he was going to win this year because of that Ryder Cup experience. And uh, it was a little bit early as far as I'm concerned. I expected him to win sort of into April or May. So this is, this is a big deal. And I certainly think that gives him a ton of confidence as he starts to head into the players, as he heads into... Uh, the Masters, the PGA, the major championship season. I think this is a big win, no question about it. And I think it's a big win because it was a playoff and it was over Patrick Cantlay. Yeah, and speaking of Patrick Cantlay there, um, I mean, just incredible golf, though. Even though he didn't win, this is, what, six straight top ten finishes for him. He's number three in the world. Look, we've known Patrick is good for a very long time, but the way that he's been playing, I mean, it, this whole season could be incredible for him. No question about it. It has been sort of a, you know, we reflect back to Rory McIlroy a few years ago when he um, he didn't finish out of the top five in his first eight events or something like that in the wraparound season. I think this is a very similar situation. 
I think the one thing that's very curious, and I wrote this down because I thought it was so uh, fascinating. He has never in the last five years had a, um, a statistical category where he's been outside of the top 58, except for this year. He is 78th on the PGA Tour this year in strokes gained approach. It's his worst uh, statistical category in four years. And yet he's having a phenomenal year. He's just not able to close the deal. And a lot of people think that he's going to close the deal this week at the Genesis. I don't happen to think so. But the long and short of it is, is that this guy is proving to everybody that last year was not a fluke. So we know Patrick Cantley is good. Last year was not a fluke. Um, probably my favorite part of the waste management was Sahith Tagalia, instant fan favorite. I mean, he's tearing up at the end talking to the media. So for people who aren't familiar with him, look, we know a lot was going on. 24 years old, just got his card. He lives with his parents still, Michael. Finishes T3. He's tearing up at the end saying he was starstruck the entire time to be playing alongside these guys. Introduce us to him and what we need to know about him. Well, here, here's here's all you need to know about this guy. First of all, the guy's a great player. Um, won a number of tournaments at, at Pepperdine University. And uh, in fact, we saw him don the, the, the shirt, the 37, which is when Pepperdine started. Um, over the weekend when he was playing 16. But all you really need to know about this guy is he is a true family guy. It meant a lot to him. This event meant a lot to him. He wanted to win. I thought he performed brilliantly. I thought he had a terrible break happen to him on the uh, on the 17th hole where he hit a beautiful little 16-degree hybrid that was cutting, and it took a terrible bounce and, and rolled. It, it kicked left and then rolled through the green. And I think this is... Uh, a look at that shot. You can see the, the the bounce that that takes. And all of a sudden, this thing is doing 55 out of 25, rolling right through the green and then into the water. And he ends up making a bogey, but he hit a great shot. And what I think we learn about him is he is a family guy who loves the game of golf. He is passionate about it. He is incredibly good. And he will win on the PGA Tour. Don't know if it'll happen this year, but he will win on the PGA Tour. And he is able to go to Genesis now. And unlike many people who are going to be taking private planes, he will be driving there, uh, as I mentioned. <laughs> uh, still living with his parents. He made a good chunk of money, though, this past weekend. Maybe he'll get his own place. So let's talk about the Genesis and coming up uh, because, of course, Riviera is very special to one Tiger Woods. His PGA Tour debut there 30 years ago this month, 1992. It was then the LA Open. What, just take us back to that moment and, and how special this is for him. Well, I think, look, you know, he puts his name on this event. That tells you how much it means to him. Um, he did he did have his first, uh, and he missed the cut, by the way, at then what was called the Nissan. In fact, what's interesting about this is I looked at this. He missed the cut in 92. He played three events on the PGA Tour, including the Genesis now, and he missed all three of those cuts. And then in 94, he played three more events on the PGA Tour and missed all three of those cuts. What does it mean to Tiger Woods? I think that, you know, this is a guy now who is – Kind of looking at his career and, and he's wondering how many more years, how many more events he's going to going to play if, in fact, he can play. And it certainly looks like he can, judging from from what we've seen uh, late last year. I think Tiger Woods is a guy who uh, now is in, in a reflective state. And I think he looks back at what has been has been an amazing career on the PGA Tour and, and um, has really influenced all these players that you're seeing him hold this trophy with Max Homa talking about when he won, how much it meant to him to win here and have Tiger hand him the trophy. I, I think that that Tiger is, um, you know, he's a legendary individual and certainly with golf clubs in his hand, even more so. And I think that his name on this event is one of the reasons why this event has such a great field and it has a tremendous field. Yeah, of course, it's invitational. We get the top 10 players in the world. Um, it'll be absolutely incredible. We'll talk to you more about it coming up. Michael, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Taking a look through everything that happened at the Waste Management and then a look ahead to the Genesis. For more from our good friend Michael Breed, make sure to check out Course Record with Michael Breed. See you at Sports Network on Mondays. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.